Hey, welcome to Face to Face. Uh, we have a whole bunch of people with us. Shelly, Marley, Lori, Stephanie, Raleigh, Daniel, and myself. We're going to be talking about Luke chapter 2. Uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas Eve. And so let's just jump into it right away. Uh, we're going to read from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. All right. Well, let's start. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was now obviously pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the, in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So last year, I remember uh, looking at Daniel behind a camera in a barn. It was flipping cold out. There are some chickens and some sheep. Um, but really it was, uh, myself and Daniel, uh, behind the camera and on Christmas Eve, uh, first Lutheran church was closed. It, it was dark, probably the first time in its history. Um, now as we move towards Christmas, uh, we are fully in person. Uh, can you just reflect a little bit about how that feels compared to where we were last year at that time. Well, I, I liked that last year because we were in a barn and I like animals and hay and smells and I liked the difference of it. It was uh, quite, quite lovely, I thought. But I'm looking forward to seeing people and seeing a packed house this year. I I enjoyed because I think it was different and we're in our homes that just yeah. being with my family um, and still being connected to the community at large. But just knowing that we were sitting in our homes, it, it made me feel like at the time, you know, after Jesus was born, when people met in their in their homes. But I'm excited this year that we're all going to be. We're back together and we're live in our community again. God's called us out of our homes. Yeah, I, I would just agree with all that. The, the, the simpleness of last year was so beautiful and it just um, such a, uh, uh, like uh, Shelly said, a, a showing us just that simpleness that it probably was like, you know, when in the early church, when people gathered in their homes in small, um, and small with just their family. And, but um, boy, you know, having Christmas programs with kids and hearing that joy of the Lord, just the, the wildness of all that too. Um, and, and the angels singing, you know, loudly, you know, so there's, there's those both parts of Christmas, the soft, sweet, simple, um, quiet moments. And there's the angels 
freaking people out and singing loud. And, and so both are beautiful. And, yeah. and we had a couple of those little angels in the Sunday program. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. One of the things that the masks, I was listening to somebody talking, uh, the masks that we've had to wear in the last however many months, years, <laughs> they've taken away <laughs> our smiles. You know, I smile at someone and then I realize, hey, I have no idea I'm smiling at them or I have no idea if they're smiling at me. And so the masks, the pandemic has taken away our smiles. Um, and so we need those smiles. We need to be in um, communion with each other and all that. Uh, we are relational people. But yet I agree with all of you that last Christmas, uh, the simplicity of it, as far as, you know, on Christmas Eve when we were at home and not at church, and it, it was there was something special to that as well. I, I spent a lot of time out at Harvest Hope Farms last year during that period. We were all filming and I, I think of the, uh, the sheep Dumbledore and uh, Festus the horse. Uh, and to me, that being in the manger, the real thing, there was manure and uh, chickens going, the roosters going off at ill time moments. Um, there was the tangibleness of putting my hands in Dumbledore's lamb's wool uh, that was beautiful. And uh, I, I think in our getting dressed up suit and tie Christmas dresses of Christmas Eve, we, we've forgotten the earthiness of the first uh, Christmas. And I, I loved that. I love being in the hay and the dirt and cobwebs in the barn. Uh, that was just so real to me. I, I will miss that. That's beautiful, Robbie. That's so true. Well, says the guy with the elk behind his shoulder. <laughs> what was that? What was that, Rupert? <laughs> he, he gives me all the things I'm supposed to say. What? Okay. <laughs> I, I would say, I mean, there it was it was unique, and I think it was a perspective shifter, which is always good. Yeah. Um logistically it was it was a little bit of a a cold one let's put it that way but uh, i think i remember marty started preaching and and we had there were all these barn, barn swallows that were just hanging out and the moment he started preaching they started chirping, and so we just kind of like we've got to keep going it'll be what it'll be but it it was it was uh i think it was good to to try to try to <clears throat> try to worship in a, in a unique way and reach outside our, our doors in a unique way. And it really does help shift. But I am, I am the first Christmas we've, we, you know, we had in the new space was, was brand new. I mean, literally we were, we were kind of building to that. I have pictures from two years ago, which shows us how far they got in the weeks right before Christmas. And so I'm really looking forward to not having that and like yeah. the stressors and being able just to worship um, together as, as much as we possibly can. Yeah. You know, it'll be interesting. I think we've all commented this. I, I went to the Vikings game last Thursday night. Insane, crazy game. 60,000 people showed up all together. Mm -hmm. And yet our worship uh, places, our houses of worship are still, you know, maybe at half capacity. And uh, so where, where does that tell us our priorities are? You know, some families will go to an ice rink that's full for their kids hockey game or like I did to a Vikes game. And yet they're still refraining from entering a house of worship. And so my challenge to people would be, it, it's time to come home. Let's let this Christmas become a homecoming uh, where you return to your home, wh wherever that place is. And we get that sense of strong community that we're in this together. I think it's that togetherness. Because when we went read through Luke, um, angels appeared to Zechariah. Do not be afraid. Angels appeared to Mary, sharing with her that you know she was going to bear God's and be born God's son. And Joseph too. Yep. And to Joseph, do not be afraid. And I think we are called as a community of believers too to not be afraid. And there were great things that were happening. Mary was going to bring forth this baby that would change the world forever. And we would, and the world would never be the same again. And I think God is up to something um, new for us too, and is telling us, "Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I'm going to do something new. I did all these 
wonderful things, trust me. We're, I'm going to do something new here. Do not be afraid. Come home. I feel like I heard a sermon about that recently that where some, some pastors talked about we weren't given a, uh, an attitude of fear. I think, I think Pastor Stephanie, that was you, um, that, that we were an atti uh, attitude and, and uh, of, of grateful and of big and of reaching out. And, and uh, yeah. Why are you smiling, Marty? Probably. <laughs> Daniel was getting some big points there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's why I was smiling. It's on video for everybody to see. It's not as yeah. if this well, is and, and and it did not come, it did not come from me. Yes. Second Timothy says we are not given a spirit of fear. We're given a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of sound mind. We are given the same spirit that comes. That is God. God's spirit's inside of us. The same spirit of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. so, uh, do we believe that? Do we trust that? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what will carry us into the into the Gospel of Luke. Um, do not be afraid. You know, on on this topic uh, and and seeing these faces here that I'm working with, I, I'm so proud to be a part of. This team, like every church, like every business, we, we had to navigate through this weird thing called COVID to stay open, to not stay open, to wear masks, to wear not masks, displease everyone, no matter what you decide. But I have loved how we adapted. We overcame. We went into a barn last year. We went online. We handed out communion packets. You know, this, this has been a beautiful team that has wrestled, struggled survived, lived, thrived together. So uh, I give gratitude for this team uh, in front of me in Hollywood squares. Yeah. I'd also add on to your challenge, Earl, I'm guessing that as we're doing this face-to-face, -face, people who are listening are part of our part of our church. We're, we're preaching to the choir. Yeah. And we have those cards that we've given away at church or ask people to take and send home. And I invite those people who are um, listening on face-to-face -face right now that you invite someone from outside of our church or yeah. inside of our church that's a, you know has some hesitation of coming back um, and invite them to come home. Because I think we're probably, um, people who are listening are part of the people who are with us every week, which yeah. is beautiful. But now let's go outside of that and let's invite those folks um, that might have a little fear yeah. in coming back and just simply invite them to come yeah. back and to come home. Wear your mask, don't wear your mask, just come. <laughs> You know, last year uh, when I was preaching that Christmas Eve service, I was looking at Daniel and I didn't see anybody else. I didn't see anybody. And, and on the other side of the camera, there was probably thousands of people out there that tuned in at some point, but I didn't see them. Um, and, you know, when we celebrate Christmas Eve now in person, uh, it's going to be great. Uh, th there's something about seeing people, uh, seeing bodies of people. And, you know, at the end of the day, God taking on human flesh, flesh and blood in, in body form. Um, I was reading something last night um, that 88 to 90 percent of the churches were closed this past year uh, at certain times. Um, and, you know, in terms of attendance, it's kind of ebbed and flowed ever since. But one thing that has arisen is the need of people. It has risen 30% in terms of counseling, in terms of mental health, in terms of food assistance or homelessness. Um, so the need is always there. And so when we celebrate Christmas Eve, um, we're going to celebrate it in, in bodily form. And we get to see all of these people again uh, and to be reminded of the story that God comes in flesh and blood. Um, and last year, you know, it, it was great for all kinds of reasons, but I missed that bodily form of seeing people. I mean, what we're doing now is called face to face. Uh, and it's great. But to be in the company of somebody flesh and blood face to face, that's a different kind of reality. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. 
Mm -hmm. I also want to point out that we also recognize that Christmas can be a really, really hard time for a lot of people who are, you know, um, just for any number of reasons. I remember back when I was a single mom and I go to church and I felt like everybody was a happy family, but me, you know, so it can be a stark reminder sometimes of, of loss or of that too, but we still hope you can come. And if you, you know, need somebody to talk to, let us know or whatever, but you know, it can be hard to, to come to church, but I think it's still important to surround yourself with like-minded people who are celebrating uh, the birth of Christ. This is a story. This is a question I have uh, as a, a person of, uh, of faith who has read this story and heard this story hundreds of times. How do you hear it differently? How do you hear it new every time you read it or every year? Or, or, or do you just, you know, when you hear something over and over again, you tend to sort of gloss over? Oh, I know that story. How do, how do, we, um, how do we bring this story to life? Uh, how do we give this story bodily form? What, how do we make sure people hear this uh, hear the, the, the amazement of this story because you know you can say oh I know that part mm-hmm. what well, do you hear differently uh, for me I think that was the gift of last year that it wasn't our norm and we we heard it and felt it or at least those of us that did it visually different sights smell sounds just were so different it was a gift mm-hmm for me this year, it's been um, doing the contemplative, contemplative prayer online and having um, done these now through up to Christmas, um, it, it was just that it was for me, the one that stood out is Mary pondered these things in her heart. And that has stuck since we did that one that has just stuck with me um, because Mary didn't think through what the angel had said. Mary listened to her heart and what was and what was in her and had this deep love for God. So sometimes I think it's just letting yourself hear, or if you're reading it, just to let yourself, let some of those words just sink in. And if there's one that comes to you that stands out, then what does God have more to say to you in that? And that's what has changed it for, for me this year. And not just this year, it's been other years as well, but it's, it's instead of just reading it, because it is a story we've heard over and over again, but what might God have to say if you just slow down and listen and just let words bubble up? Um, Cause that's usually the Holy spirit giving you a gift of something that like Mary, he wants you to ponder and spend some time with. Because on a practical level, um, reading a different translation, reading it in a different, in a few different translations, even ones that you maybe don't like, you know, go back to the King, <laughs> go back to the King James and read the message and uh, you know, the passion translation, all that. Um, so pra- practically that's a way, but, um, but yeah, I suppose anytime you come to, to scripture, the, the thing to do is to, you know, ask God to give you fresh, mm-hmm. give me fresh eyes, Lord, for this and a fresh breath of your presence. And um you know, with this story and with any, with any time I read the Bible, that's the prayer, but, um, right. How about you, Steph? You asked the question, do you have any, how do you pastors time after time after time preach on it mm-hmm. and, and find a freshness? I, I think the Easter story and the Christmas story are the hardest stories oh. to preach. Yeah. 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 Sure. For sure they are. But I, what, I'm going to piggyback off what you said, Marley and, uh, and Raleigh, to build on the theme here. What you said, Marley, is maybe there's some work to do before you come to worship <laughs> so that you don't show up on Christmas Eve um, all stressed out because... Nobody got dressed when they were supposed to get dressed and the meat and the oven got in late and all of that. Right. But that the work that you do before you come to worship is you read the story before you come 
and you say, Lord, I'm going to hear this story in worship again tonight. Give me fresh eyes. Open my ears to it. Help me be attentive to your word in this hour of worship so that, 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 that your prayer happens even before you walk through the door. Um, and I mean, that, that's what we do, uh, right? We're, we're, we're already starting. Uh, what, is, what is that word that, that needs to be proclaimed in a, in a new way? And, and the thought that, that life is, is messy in bodily form. Um, whether it is a funeral that we're going to be doing or whether it's life uh, getting messy or chaotic in our own uh, day to day uh, to know that, that Christmas is, it wasn't sanitized. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like last year, it wasn't sanitized. Uh, There were sheep and there were barn swallows all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, But, but really in essence, that's our life Uh, for people who come uh, their life is not put together. There's there's enough dysfunction in our lives to go around for everyone. Um, being in the body is not always easy. And to hear the message, the beauty of the message that God comes in human flesh to dwell with us. Um, that that's a, that's a powerful story to be told again and again and again. And it's not only the scripture that um, I want to hear with new ears, but also all the songs. I mean, to me, Christmas is music. And so, you know, if listening to the lyrics of some of the songs, like Go Holy Night and some of those, you know, Fall on Your Knees and all that, to try to hear even the songs with uh, newness is uh, a challenge. I'm going to close uh, by reading this uh, Christmas Stories by Max Licato. And uh, I think it'll wrap it up here. The stable stinks. Like all stables do, the stench of urine, dung, and sheep reek in the air. The ground is hard. The hay is scarce. Cobwebs cling to the ceiling, and a mouse scurries across the floor. A more lowly place of birth could not exist. Off to one side sit a group of shepherds. They sit silently on the floor, perhaps perplexed, perhaps in awe, no doubt in amazement. Their night watch had been interrupted by an explosion of light from heaven and a symphony of angels. God goes to those who have time to hear him. So on this cloudless night, he comes to simple shepherds. And our prayer is that wherever we are, in a barn or in our houses of worship, uh, that God will come to those who have prepared their hearts to hear him. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this gift of Christmas. We thank you for your holy and precious child who came on that divine night to share his love and his life with us. So come now, Lord Jesus, cast out our sin and enter in, for we have prepared you room, and we want you to dwell among us. We love you, Lord, and open our eyes again to this story, the story that changed the world forever. Amen. On the count of three. Let's say Merry Christmas. Can we do that? Hopefully. Hopefully. One, two. Merry Christmas. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Let's try it again, Raleigh. Say it again, Marty. Two, three. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.